Snow White and the Seven Dwarves Once upon a time, there lived a lovely princess with fair skin and blue eyes. She was so fair that she was named Snow White. Her mother died when Snow White was a baby. Soon after, the king married a new woman who was beautiful, but as well as proud and cruel. She had studied dark magic and owned a magic mirror of which she would daily ask, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And the magic mirror would say, You are your majesty. But one day, the mirror replied, Snow White, Snow White is the fairest of them all. The wicked queen was very angry and jealous of Snow White. She ordered her huntsman to take Snow White to the forest and kill her. I want you to bring back her heart, she ordered. The poor huntsman took Snow White into the forest, but found himself unable to kill the girl. Instead, he let her go and brought the queen the heart of a wild boar. Snow White wandered the forest all night crying. When it was daylight, she came to a tiny cottage and went inside. There was nobody there, but she found seven plates on the table and seven tiny beds in the bedroom. Because she was so hungry, Snow White ate a few vegetables and a little bread from each little plate, and from each cup she drank a little bit of milk. Afterward, because she was so tired, she lay down on one of the little beds and fell fast asleep. After dark, the owners of the house returned home. They were the seven dwarves who mined for gold in the mountains. As soon as they arrived home, they saw that someone had been there, for not everything was in the same order as they had left it. The first one said, Who has been sitting in my chair? The second one, Who has been eating from my plate? The third one, Who has been eating my bread? The fourth one, Who has been eating my vegetables? The fifth one, Who has been eating with my fork? The sixth one, Who has been drinking from my cup? But the seventh one, looking at his bed, found Snow White lying there asleep. The seven dwarves all came running up, and they cried out with amazement. They fetched their seven candles and shunned the light on Snow White. Oh, good heaven, they cried. This child is beautiful. When she woke up and told them her story, the seven dwarves asked her to stay with them. When the dwarves were away, Snow White would make delicious meals for them. The dwarves loved her and cared for her. Every morning, when they left the house, they instructed her never to open the door to strangers. Meanwhile, in the palace, the wicked queen asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, Snow White is the fairest of them all. She lives with the seven dwarfs in the woods. The wicked stepmother was furious. She was actually a witch who knew how to make magic potions. She now made a poisonous potion and dipped a shiny red apple into it. Then she disguised herself as an old peasant woman and went to the woods with the apple. She knocked on the cottage door and said, Pretty little child, let me in. Look what I have for you. Snow White said, I'm so sorry, old lady. I cannot let you in. The seven dwarfs have told me not to talk to strangers. But then Snow White saw the shiny red apple and opened the door. The wicked witch offered her the apple, and when she took a bite, poor Snow White fell into a deep sleep. The wicked stepmother went back to the palace and asked the mirror, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, You are your majesty, and she was very happy. When the seven dwarfs came home to find Snow White lying on the floor, they were very upset. They cried all night and then built a glass coffin for Snow White. They kept the coffin in front of the cottage. One day, Prince Charming was going past the cottage and he saw Snow White lying in the coffin. 
he said to the dwarfs, My, my, she is so beautiful, I would like to kiss her. And he did. Immediately, Snow White opened her eyes. She was alive again. The prince and the seven dwarfs were very happy. Prince Charming married Snow White and took her to his palace and lived happily ever after. The End The Princess and the Pea There once was a prince, and he wanted a princess. But then she must be a real princess. He traveled right around the world to find one. But there was always something wrong. There were plenty of princesses, but whether they were real princesses, he had great difficulty in discovering. There was always something that was not quite right about them. So at last, he had come home again, and he was very sad, because he wanted a real princess so badly. One evening, there was a terrible storm. It thundered and lightened and the rain poured down in torrents. Indeed, it was a fearful night. In the middle of the storm, somebody knocked at the town gate, and the old king himself went to open it. It was a princess who stood outside, but she was in a terrible state from the rain and the storm. The water streamed out of her ear and her clothes, it ran in at the top of her shoes and out at the heel. But she said she was a real princess. Well, we shall soon see if that is true, thought the old queen. But she said nothing. She went into the bedroom, took all the bedclothes off, and laid a pea on the bedstead. Then she took twenty mattresses and piled them on top of the pea and then twenty feather beds on top of the mattress. This was where the princess was to sleep that night. In the morning, they asked her how she slept. Oh, terribly bad, said the princess. I have hardly closed my eyes the whole night. Heaven knows what was in the bed. I seem to be lying upon some hard thing, and my whole body is black and blue this morning. It is terrible! They saw at once that she must be a real princess when she had felt the pea through twenty mattresses and twenty feather beds. Nobody but a real princess could have such a delicate skin. So the prince took her to be his wife. For now, he was sure that he had found a real princess. And the pea was put into the museum, where it may still be seen if no one has stolen it. Now this is a true story. The Ugly Duckling A little duckling was very sad because he thought he was the ugliest amongst all his brothers and sisters. They would not play with him and teased the poor ugly duckling. One day he saw his reflection in the water and cried, Nobody likes me. I am so ugly. He decided to leave home and went far away into the woods. Deep in the forest, he saw a cottage in which there lived an old woman, her hen, and her cat. The duckling stayed with them for some time, but he was unhappy there and soon left. When winter set in, the poor duckling almost froze to death. A peasant took him home to his wife and children. The poor duckling was terrified of the children and escaped. The ugly duckling spent the winter in a marshy pond. Finally, spring arrived. One day, the duckling saw a beautiful swan swimming in the pond and fell in love with her. But then he remembered how everyone made fun of him, and he bent his head down in shame. When he saw his own reflection in the water, he was astonished. He was not an ugly duckling anymore, but a handsome young swan. 
Now, he knew why he looked so different from his brothers and sisters. They were ducklings, but I was a baby swan, he said to himself. He married the beautiful swan and lived happily ever after. The End The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there were three little pigs, and the time came for them to seek their fortunes and build their houses. The first little pig built himself a house of straw. The middle brother decided to build a house of sticks. It wasn't either a very strong house, but the third pig, the oldest, decided to build a house of bricks. He did not mind hard work because he wanted a strong house, because he knew that in the woods nearby there was a wolf who liked to catch little pigs and eat them up. When the three houses were finished, the three little pigs were happy dancing and singing. Who is scared of furious wolf, furious wolf, furious wolf? Who is scared of furious wolf? Just as the first little pig reached his door, out of the woods popped up a big, bad wolf. The little pig squealed with fright and slammed the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, cried the wolf. Not by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin, chin, said the little pig. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, roared the wolf. <gasps> and he blew the little straw house. Away raced the little pig to his brother's house of sticks. The wolf was really angry, so went behind the youngest pig, the house of sticks, where the pigs were singing, who is scared of furious wolf, furious wolf, furious wolf? Who is scared of furious wolf? Suddenly, the wolf roared. Open the door. Let me come in. No, we won't, said the pigs. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow down your house, roared the wolf, <gasps> and he blew down the little house of sticks. The two little pigs raced away to his big brother's house of bricks and started to sing. Who is scared of furious wolf, furious wolf, furious wolf? Who is scared of furious wolf? This made the big wolf perfectly furious. Open the door, little pigs. Let me come in. No, we won't. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow down your house. <gasps> but... He couldn't blow down the little house of bricks. He decided to climb and get in through the chimney. So he climbed, jumped down, and fell right into a kettle of boiling water. He sprang straight up the chimney again and raced away into the woods. The three little pigs never saw him again and spent their time in the strong brick house, dancing and singing. Who is scared of furious wolf, furious wolf, furious wolf? Who is scared of furious wolf, furious wolf? The End The Story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She went for a walk in the forest. Pretty soon, she came upon a house. She knocked, and when no one answered, she walked right in. At the table in the kitchen, there were three bowls of porridge. Goldilocks was hungry. She tasted the porridge from the first bowl. This porridge is too hot, she exclaimed. So she tasted the porridge from the second bowl. This porridge is too cold, she said. So she tasted the last bowl of porridge. Ah, this porridge is just right, she said happily, and she ate it all up. After she'd eaten the three bears' breakfasts, she decided she was feeling a little tired. So she walked into the living room, where she saw three chairs. Goldilocks sat in the first chair to rest her feet. This chair is too big, she exclaimed. So she sat in the second chair. This chair is too big, too, she whined. So she tried the last and smallest chair. Ah, 
This chair is just right, she sighed. But just as she settled down into the chair to rest, it broke into pieces. Goldilocks was very tired by this time, so she went upstairs to the bedroom. She lay down in the first bed, but it was too hard. Then she lay in the second bed, but it was too soft. Then she lay down in the third bed, and it was just right. Goldilocks fell asleep. As she was sleeping, the three bears came home. Someone's been eating my porridge, growled Papa Bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, said the Mama Bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, and they ate it all up, cried the Baby Bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, growled the Papa Bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said the Mama Bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, and they've broken it all to pieces, cried the Baby Bear. They decided to look around some more, and when they got upstairs to the bedroom, Papa Bear growled, Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, said the Mama Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, and she's still there, exclaimed Baby Bear. Just then, Goldilocks woke up and saw the three bears. She screamed, help, and she jumped up and ran out of the room. Goldilocks ran down the stairs, opened the door, and ran away into the forest. And she never returned to the home of the three bears. The End Little Red Riding Hood One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother said to her, Take this basket of goodies to your grandma's cottage, but don't talk to strangers on the way. Promising not to, Little Red Riding Hood skipped off. On her way, she met the big bad wolf who asked, Where are you going, little girl? To my grandma's, Mr. Wolf, she answered. The big bad wolf then ran to her grandmother's cottage, much before Little Red Riding Hood, and knocked on the door. When grandma opened the door, he locked her up in the cupboard. The wicked wolf then wore grandma's clothes and lay on her bed, waiting for Little Red Riding Hood. When Little Red Riding Hood reached the cottage, she entered and went to Grandma's bedside. My, what big eyes you have, Grandma, she said in surprise. All the better to see you with, my dear, replied the wolf. My, what big ears you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf. What big teeth you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to eat you with, growled the wolf, pouncing on her. Little Red Riding Hood screamed, and the woodcutters in the forest came running into the cottage. They beat the big bad wolf and rescued Grandma from the cupboard. Grandma hugged Little Red Riding Hood with joy. The big bad wolf ran away, never to be seen again. The End Jack and the Beanstalk Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack who lived with his poor widowed mother. They had sold almost everything they owned to buy food. When their last cow stopped giving milk, Jack's mother sent him to town to sell it. On the way to town, Jack met a strange fellow who told him stories of magic beans. Where can I buy some of these magic beans for my mother? asked Jack. I have the last five magic beans, and I will sell them to you because you are a good boy. The strange man smiled at Jack. Well, I have nothing but our old cow, and we need the money I would get by selling her for food. 
The man replied, Trust me, my boy. These beans will bring you food and fortune, and your mother will be proud. Jack hesitated, but finally traded the cow for the beans. When Jack returned home, his mother was furious and threw the beans out of the kitchen window, crying. Jack went to bed that night, sad and hungry. He woke the next morning to find a huge beanstalk growing in the garden. The beans really are magic, he cried. Jack saw that the stalk reached the clouds. He remembered stories about the clouds containing gold and started climbing the stalk to see what he could find. He climbed and climbed. When he got to the top, he saw a huge castle and headed for it. The door was so big that Jack could crawl beneath it. Once inside, he saw a giant man eating his dinner. When the giant was finished, he called his servant to bring him his bag of gold coins. While counting his money, the giant became drowsy and fell asleep. Jack crept up to the giant and stole his bag of gold. He struggled down the beanstalk with his money. And when he got to the bottom, he called for his mother. Jack's mother was very happy because this money was the same money that the giant had stolen from Jack's father many years ago. But she was also afraid. She knew how dangerous the giant was and made Jack promise he would never go back. Well, Jack did promise. After a while, the money began to run out. Jack began to wonder if he would find anything else in the castle. Once again, Jack decided he would go back up the beanstalk and back to the castle. Once again, he reached the castle and climbed under the castle door. And once again, he found the giant eating dinner at his table. When he was finished this time, however, the giant called for his magic hen. Jack was amazed when he saw the hen lay an egg of pure gold. While the giant was watching the hen, he again became drowsy and fell asleep. Jack crept silently to the table and grabbed the hen. When he returned home, his mother was very angry that Jack had gone back to the castle. She grabbed Jack's axe, intent on cutting the beanstalk down. Jack begged her not to and showed her how the hen could lay golden eggs. Jack's mother put the axe down and watched with delight as the hen laid one beautiful golden egg after another. After a while, Jack's curiosity got the better of him and he once again thought about what else he could find in the castle. Once again, Jack decided he would go back up the beanstalk and back to the castle. Once again, he reached the castle and climbed under the castle door. And once again, he found the giant eating dinner at his table. And once again, when he was finished this time, however, the giant called for his magic harp. Jack watched as the harp began to play beautiful music all by itself. The music was so beautiful that before long, the lazy giant once again fell fast asleep. Jack crept silently to the table, but as soon as Jack picked up the harp, it began playing very loudly in his strange hands, and the giant awoke. Fee, fi, fo, fum, yelled the giant, and he chased after the boy and his harp. Jack raced to the beanstalk and slid down. He could feel the stalk shake as the giant began climbing down. Luckily, his axe was nearby, and he began chopping down the beanstalk. The beanstalk shook and cracked under the weight of the giant and Jack's chopping. Finally, the stalk snapped, and the giant fell to earth, never to be seen again. Jack and his mother lived happily ever after. The End Lino the Lamp is Afraid of the Dark Lino the lamp is a night lamp. Every night, Lino dreads the moment he is switched off, just when Mrs. Lee is about to sleep. He is a lamp, after all, and is not used to being in the dark. Ali Alarm Clock needs to hold Lino down as he gets on the verge of a panic attack. Help! I can't see! 
Shush, Ali will say. You will wake everyone up. Isn't that better so we are not left in the dark? Lino will say. Lino the lamp is afraid of the dark. There are lots of horrible things that could happen. Maybe there will be a big tiger that will jump from behind and scratch him to shreds. Maybe there will be monsters that will sneak up from underneath and eat him alive. Maybe there will be vampire bats that will come down from the ceiling and attack him. Or even worse, there may be aliens that will kidnap him and use his parts for their spaceship. It is not hard to conclude that these thoughts keep Lino awake all night. He barely sleeps night after night and is always very tired. So Lino finally decides to ask for help. Ollie, you are much tinier than me. How come you are not afraid of the dark? There is nothing to it, Lino. You just have to stop thinking of silly things. No one is out there to get you, Ollie smiled. Really? Lino was a bit embarrassed. Lino is about twice the size of Ali, and yet he is more of a scaredy cat than Ali. That night, Lino decides to be braver. No imaginary monsters, or vampire bats, or aliens can scare him. It was not as easy. Lino's mind is so used to thinking of bats and aliens. He needs to try hard to think about other things. It is a good thing that Ali alarm clock is beside him. So whenever he gets scared, he looks across the table to see Ali alarm clock's shadow sleeping in the dark. There is nothing to it, Lino would keep telling himself. Night after night, Lino tries to be a little bit braver until one day, he discovers that his fear of the dark just went away. It really is not a big deal after all. I can still see a bit in the dark and I can hear and feel things around me. Lino thanked Ali. Ali, you are right. There is really nothing to it. Lino the lamp sleeps soundly now. The dark is really not a big deal. addition to the Lee kitchen. She is a great electric kettle. She boils a kettle full of water in 20 seconds flat. A real tough task to do. She is looking forward to meeting her new friends in the kitchen. It is a bit puzzling though that Kelly does not get a very warm welcome when she lands on the kitchen worktop. The spoon and fork families, who are all silver, giggle when they pass her by. <laughs> the ladles and spatulas, who are all black, look at her from head to toe in disbelief. The copper pots and pans try to avoid her as best they can. The tall crystal wine glasses look at her like she came out of a horror movie. Even the green sink sponge looks at her disapprovingly. Everything about Kelly is as you would expect a kettle to be, except for one small detail. She is neon pink from top to toe. A bright, blinding sort of pink. All the kitchen things are thinking the same thing. A kettle that's pink can never be a serious kettle. Kelly is fuming mad with whoever trying to be cool designer made her pink. Kettles are usually white, black, or silver. Whoever heard of a pink kettle? Doesn't he know how hard it would be to fit in a kitchen that is mostly in hues of gray, silver, black, crystal, and some green? Kelly's social life is ruined. One day, the power fails in the Lee household. The whole kitchen is pitch dark, 
except for one thing. Kelly has a slight glow around her because of her neon pink coating. So to see what is happening around them, all the kitchen things have no choice but to huddle around Kelly. Polite conversation is a natural result when you are all huddled so closely. The kitchen crew are not a bad bunch after all, just a bit wary of pink. Hellos and how do you do's start being said. Kelly, being the charming person that she is, gets some nice conversation going. She knows what kitchen crew members like to talk about. Being scrubbed too vigorously, being subjected to extreme heat, being attacked by pets and children, among other things. When the power comes back on, it does not take the kitchen crew long to realize that apart from being nice, Kelly also does a cracking job of boiling water. 20 seconds flat. Even if she is pink, being pink does not make Kelly a less serious kettle after all. She's as good as any kettle or kitchen thing, but just pink. Mr. Cool Refrigerator is the new addition to the Lee home. He does a good job of keeping things cold. He is clean and shiny and the most popular guy in the kitchen. Until one day, Mr. Cool Refrigerator started to get worried because he started to have a bad smell. All his kitchen friends started talking about him and did not want to be near him. He started to cry. But wait, there must be something causing the smell. But what could it be? Mr. Cool started looking at his shelves and drawers. It's not the eggs, because eggs don't smell. It's not the milk, because it's sealed in a carton. It's not the honey, because honey smells sweet. It is not the jam, because it's in a jar. It's not the orange, because oranges smell nice. Then Mr. Cool Refrigerator found it. It was a piece of smelly cheese Mr. Lee left from dinner last night. That same night Mr. Lee ate his cheese and Mr. Cool Refrigerator smelled no more. He was very happy. His kitchen friends were also happy. Sorry Mr. Cool, we did not even think it was the cheese. Mr. Cool Refrigerator was back to being Mr. Popular in the kitchen again. A happy ending. Irma Inflatable Bed gets a beating. It is a special occasion when Irma Inflatable Bed is taken out and inflated. There must be a slumber party or some unexpected guest staying over. Irma is excited. Instead of sleeping in her cardboard box, she gets to stretch and sleep with a fuzzy blanket around her. But Irma doesn't know who is sleeping over. It is Dennis, Baby Lee's cousin. He is a little bit more active than any normal kid. Before anyone could blink an eye, Excited Dennis was already jumping up and down on Irma with all of his might. His heels were digging into Irma's tummy. His elbows were ramming into Irma's sides. Then comes his shoulders. Dennis clearly enjoys the feeling of bouncing up and down an inflatable bed. While Dennis was having a good time, you can imagine how Irma must have felt. Irma never met such a terrible kid. Tummy and back pain were the order of the day. No more false dreams of peaceful and warm fuzzy evenings. 
Irma can only keep mom until Dennis gets tired of kicking and stomping and finally falls asleep. It is going to be a dreadful weekend. The next morning, Irma was barely awake when the feet and elbow action started again. Irma was scrunching in pain. Dennis really needs to be taught a lesson. Thankfully, Dennis was distracted by the smell of morning porridge and left Irma alone for a while. As soon as breakfast was over, Dennis jumped back on Irma with all his might. Bam! A loud thud was heard in the house. No more bounciness this time. What Dennis doesn't know is Irma deflated herself a bit while he was having his morning porridge. Dennis's bum landed smack on the hard stone floor. Ouch! Dennis started to cry. Mrs. Lee came to comfort Dennis. Now, now, Dennis. You shouldn't be jumping up and down on the airbed. It will cause accidents. That did teach Dennis a lesson. He was still and well behaved while his bum was recovering from the thud. Irma can now look forward to her warm, fuzzy, peaceful weekend.